Good evening, Charlie Macklin here. In today's video, I want to go over alchemical medicines, the concept of spagyrics, and uh, show you a few tinctures that I've made. First, let's discuss the idea of uh, spagyrics and the alchemical realms. The alchemical realms is a very interesting concept that um, I heard about from a fellow named Avery Hopkins, who has uh, some great videos on YouTube as well, Chimea Arts. In the alchemical realms, all of existence is categorized from least complex to most complex. At the bottom you have metals, just a simple atomic geometry, and this is where you get the most immortal of substances. As you work your way up in complexity you get to minerals, you have crystalline structures, you can get more complex behaviors, photovoltaics, piezoelectrics, uh, many amazing things happen in the crystalline area. This is where computing can be done. And as you go even further up, you cross uh, the line of mortality where you're into the substance of DNA, the thing of life. And this is the vegetable realm. Of course, it is limited in the fact that it does not move, but once you get even higher in complexity, you're into the animal realm with a nervous system. It's animated, and it's the most complex of the realms. <clears throat> now, spagyric uh, is generally associated with alchemical medicine, but the word spagyric comes from ancient Greek, and it means to draw out or to gather. And this is the idea where you're getting something from nature and extracting its essence and then using it to apply to your body, mind, or spirit. Um, <clears throat> in typical teachings, oils are associated with the soul. Alcohols, which are also called spirits, are associated with the spirit or the mind. And salts and minerals are more associated with the body. And that's not to say that it has to be that way. For example... There are oils that are going to be beneficial to your body. There are salts that are beneficial to your mind. So the link is just a starting point. It's not necessarily exact. And when you talk about uh, these sort of things, generally people associate them with planets or associations with uh, chakras, that is to say energy levels in the body, um, even gender or other forces. And uh, so to give you an example of that, <clears throat> there's uh, medicines that come from metal, for example, colloidal silver. Silver creams are great for burns. Silver can be used as uh, all kinds of anti-septic uh, type of a material. It's very good substance as a medicine, sil colloidal silver. And silver is generally associated with the moon or Monday. So if you were really hardcore into it, you would say, oh, well, we've got to do this on Monday. But I don't necessarily think it has to go that far. I'm just kind of giving you the background of how far you could take it if you wanted to try to amplify the effect of these medicines. That's kind of up to you. Now, as far as the medicines, the way I like to do it is just trial and error and taste testing to see which has the most kick. And I like to research what the Native Americans had done in the past and... Uh, find out which parts of the plant have the most wallop at whatever time of the year. Now I've picked most of these just from right here on the farm. and uh, <clears throat> But not all of them. I'll, for example, uh, this oregano here. So to make a tincture, what you're going to do is you're going to start off with the herb. You're going to grind it up into a powder. And then real simply, half and half, add straight alcohol. You could use vodka. Uh, I used Everclear, and then you can water it down a little if it's too strong. And then mix it around, let it sit in the cabinet for a couple of weeks, and you've got yourself a tincture. The alcohol pulls the plant essence away from the plant, and it puts oils and, and other alcohols all together, and you end up with a, a liquid that you can then put into a nice, neat medicine dropper bottle and uh, apply for whatever you need it for. So, for example, this oregano is said to be a good antifungal. It's also really good for sore throats. So that's that's a good one to have around. This one, 
I picked here from a tree. This is the prickly ash tree. And these are the berries, not just the berries, but the husk of the berries from the prickly ash tree at a very specific time of the year when they're bright red. And they dried out a little, lost their color. But these have quite a punch to them. They will numb your mouth. It's a good medicine for like a fever blister or something, uh, like a toothache. Um, it has a different scent than the bark, so it's and it, it seems to have a different effect, but it's very similar effect to the bark. This is the seeds of that berry, and uh, I don't know what these are for yet, but I'm keeping them anyways. Kind of neat. And uh, you can take these, which I've found by taste testing to be the strongest, mix it with your alcohol, and uh, I added some uh, muscadine grape to give it a little red, reddish orange color. Uh, the muscadine grapes are wild here, and they just they shrink down to almost nothing, but they're pretty neat. Um, <clears throat> to give this a little body, you can add glycerin. That gives it a little sweetness, and, and if you're going to make like a throat medicine, that'd be a little easier on the throat than straight alcohol. Uh, these are just some of uh, the same berries left over. This one is prickly ash bark, and it... it uh, oh no, wait, this here is echinacea. Yeah. Echinacea, purple coneflower, you pull the root out of the ground. This was great for the common cold. I've used alcohol and glycerin to make this, so this is a good sore throat elixir. Uh, you could add other stuff to it as well to really give it a full uh, pain relieving effect, but I don't have those substances. And uh, this is the prickly ash bark. It turned out it was a bright green and it aged a little more of an olive color now but it comes from the bark of the prickly ash tree again this is full strength with alcohol It'd be a good numbing uh, tincture you could put it on a, a canker sore a toothache you could I've used I had a cold the other day use it on a sore throat it does work but it's so strong with the alcohol that it's a little bit harsh I really prefer this you know echinacea or a syrupy version of it of the uh, prickly ash bark like this uh, one over here that I used the, from the berries. Uh, the, this is what prickly ash bark looks like by the way. It has thorns all over it. It sells for up to forty dollars a pound and here's what the bark looks like when it's shredded up very nicely which I may pulverize and I may sell that or save some of it. Uh, this is supple jack. It's a wild vine and it makes a good tea. I don't think it has medicinal qualities but not a bad tea. Purple horse mint. I found this at my buddy's house. You can use this for... Oh, it's almost like citronella. I think you could probably make a bug repellent out of that. Um, you can taste it. It's not going to hurt you, but it's very, very pungent. Uh, back here we have blue sage, which is dried out. And it really, really makes a good... Uh, if you're into smudging sticks, it's a kind of a mild smudging stick. Probably not like... You would use it more for... Uh, ceremonial purposes uh, but nothing too intense is more maybe like as a way to open communications for prayer or something um, this here is something I just picked called bone set and <clears throat> it can be used to make a tincture that's good for the flu and I'm really really interested in seeing what this can do I taste it it's got a very odd taste and uh, I need to check the species. There's various species of this of this bone set plant, you know. And anything the cattle on the farm here, if they don't want to eat it, <laughs> probably because they can't. I mean, it probably, you know, there's a fine line between medicinal and toxic. So probably need to do a little more research on that one. But uh, <clears throat> I've heard it's great for the flu. So I'm going to keep it around, maybe do a tincture on it. So those are the those are my tinctures. As far as like w the idea of spagyrics and how to link them to alchemy, man, pretty much just try it out. You know, and once you get them, I'm going to put them in these nifty little dropper bottles. Uh, you know, you could pour it out in a spoon and put it on your sore throat during the time, you know, cold and flu season. And... Um, I just test them out for strength when I have a cold and you know the time the day of the week like for example this substance here it's going to be the prickly ash this one and this one here 
These are going to be associated with Mars. That would be the classical, you know, hippie way of looking at the energy approach of it. I don't necessarily think that I need to take it on a Tuesday because it's said to be associated with Mars. If I have a sore throat on a Friday, you know, I mean, it's medicine. And as far as like trying to link, well, it has an alcohol and an oil, so it's for your mind and, and your soul. I mean, to me, I just do what works. If it fixes this sore throat and it numbs the pain where the pain needs to be numbed, then there you have it. Now, someone else, feel free to take and take this medicine concept and expand it and say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to take colloidal silver on Monday because that's that's the way it should be done. Hey, man, try it out. It might work. I mean, but you're into faith-based healing at that point, and there's nothing wrong with that because mind is a very powerful thing. But scientifically, it would be hard to test. I mean, it would be time-consuming to test. It'd be interesting, though. But anyways, I really wanted to show you these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, basically, I was telling you last time I'm going to do action for you. Well, it rained here in Texas for, I don't know, weeks? So I haven't been able to do the pyrotechnic thing outside. But I will leave you one little sample of the uh, pyrotechnic mixture that I promised I would burn. And we have a lot more to do, and I want to do a much bigger video on it. But this will just be kind of a little parting gift for you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Not yet. Stay on target. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.